my name is Joel Steele. I'm an Indigenous scientist, a Palawa man. I survived childhood cancer. I'm here to be a neuroscientist and change the world. How did you feel when you first found out you had cancer? Um, the way I felt when I first found out that I had cancer. The doctors misdiagnosed me and said that I had a lung cancer and that I was going to die and that there was nothing else that we could do. Um, luckily, I was able to survive by having lots and lots of harsh chemotherapy and radiotherapy. But the first thing was I wouldn't get to say goodbye to all the people that I uh, in my life because I was going to hospital the next day when I found out and that I might not wake up having to say goodbye to my parents and say goodbye to the ones I love by phone. And then even my friends, then I told them, some of them didn't believe me. So that was very hard. Why do you want to be a scientist? I stop and think that I might not be here tomorrow and that I know that I shouldn't be here today and it's only thanks to science that I'm alive. It's only thanks to all the scientists that researched chemotherapies and all the children before me that went through the chemotherapies that knew it would work. But up until maybe year nine, year 10, I didn't even really think about university as a thing. I didn't understand what a university was or what you do at a university. I just knew it was further school. It wasn't until I studied later on in year 11 and year 12 that I actually really thought, oh wow, like you can do science and you can go on and do things and change the world. I thought that that would be a cool idea. Let's go to university and see if we can make the world a better place. When you were at school, what kind of student were you? <laughs> um, I probably wasn't the best student. Uh, every report said that I was too talkative and that I was a disruptive student. Um, I was only an average student. I wasn't exceptional in any respect really and um, I only made it to this point because I kept trying. Um, I. I still don't feel like I belong at university. I still don't feel like I'm smart enough to be here. And I never had that moment of like, oh yeah, I can do this. It's just, I kept trying and eventually it worked. <laughs> I think I've tricked and fooled everybody around me. Do you think that your Aboriginal roots impacted your life? If so, how? I, I think that if you think that you have Aboriginal heritage, you should go back and trace your roots. I think history and where we come from is probably the most important thing because it defines who we are. Even if we don't know about it, it does define who we are. What advice do you have for Aboriginal students who want to study science? It was only thanks to Aurora through their outreach program that I could finally begin to engage with other Indigenous aspiring scientists. Aurora helps any Aboriginal student that wants to go further, to go into higher education, to change the statistics of where we're underrepresented in nearly every single way. What are you going to do in the future of your career? Are you going to invent a vaccine for coronavirus? <laughs> I'm not the type of scientist that makes a vaccine. I'm the type of scientist that works out how your brain works. So my career, I want to go on and do more science. I want to start my own lab where I can have other people that come along and learn how to do science. And then we figure out things about the brain and help other people with diseases. That's what I want to do with the rest of my life. What made you follow your dreams? The real moment when I realised, even while I was at university, I still wasn't sure that I wanted to go on and be a scientist, even at university. I was one day where I was picking up cans outside of, uh, outside of the bar I was working in. And as I was picking up the cans of rubbish for a very measly amount of money, I thought, I thought that maybe there's more to life and that I don't want to do this for the rest of my life and I want to go on and do something and change something in the world. Leave some betterment after I die. I live on borrowed time. I've already, I'm 10 years past my expiry date and every moment's a winner. <laughs>